It's interesting that in both Britain and America, when people ask about the truth of Christianity, often they seem to be interested in uh, the empty tomb and in the virgin birth, and as though those two things were some, somehow equal and parallel. It's very interesting, New Testament, that the resurrection is everywhere, but the virginal conception of Jesus is only in those two little bits at the beginning of Matthew and Luke. And uh, really, for Paul, for Hebrews, for John, you can say the whole of the Christian gospel without mentioning the birth of Jesus. That's not to say it's unimportant. It's just to say it isn't nearly as important as Jesus' death and resurrection. Take them away and you haven't got a gospel at all. Having said that, what we find in Matthew and Luke are two very strange stories because Matthew and Luke both, I'm sure, knew that out there in the wider pagan world, there were people who told stories about Alexander the Great being uh, conceived when his mother was a virgin, about Augustus, similarly, about various heroes and demigods. And since Matthew and Luke both want to talk about Jesus as the fulfillment of Judaism, which didn't have stories like that, this is really kind of a dangerous thing, dangerous ground for them to be getting into. And so I ask myself as a historian, why would they do that? particularly when the obvious sneering retort to such a report is, oh, well, we know Mary was just sleeping around with Roman soldiers or whatever, which is precisely what some of the enemies of Christianity went on to say. So it seems to me that Matthew and Luke would not have included those stories unless they really believed that something very strange like this had happened. And indeed, what we can see in Matthew, the way he tells the story of the genealogy from Abraham through David through the exile to Jesus, he tells it in such a way as to highlight the strange births that happen from time to time in that sequence. For instance, David and Bathsheba um, illicitly getting together and producing Solomon. Perhaps as a way of sort of softening the blow that this is really very strange, but this is actually how God did it. Now, of course, I cannot prove the virginal conception of Jesus, and I don't think you can prove it in the same way as I would prove the resurrection, that you can't explain the rise of early Christianity without it. Because, as I say, you can explain Paul's theology without ever mentioning the virginal conception, because Paul never does. So that it's not the same kind of argument. What I want to say is, though, that if the resurrection happened in the way that the New Testament says it does, and frankly, if it didn't, I can't explain as a historian how Christianity got off the ground, then that forces me to hold my modern mind open to say, if God was really in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Ought I not to expect some other strange things as well? And when I then have these stories which look so strange, and yet, why would they do that? Maybe it really did happen. Because, you see, as far as I know, nobody in Judaism was going around saying, aha, Isaiah 7.14, Messiah must be born of a virgin. I don't know that anyone was taking that text like that before. So it's not that Matthew had that text in mind and had to pin it on Jesus. I suspect that Matthew would have been quite happy not to mention that. But it's rather the case that he's got this story and he wants to find something in the Old Testament to go with it. And likewise, Luke, it's not the case that he has stories about angels and shepherds which he's wanting to pin on Jesus. Rather, these are, this is the stuff that he's got to work with. Now, having said all of that, again, as a historian, I can't prove that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. It is historically likely that he might well have been born in Nazareth. However, we have these two quite different stories one in Matthew about the wise men coming to Herod in Jerusalem, etc., and one in Luke about the census and so on. And it looks as though they are both aware that even though you wouldn't have expected it, Jesus was in fact born in Bethlehem. And there you've got a small amount of multiple attestation, two totally different stories, agreeing on this surprising fact which doesn't emerge anywhere else. Nobody else makes anything of it. Nobody in... in uh, Paul never says, ah, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, therefore he's the Messiah. So I think as a historian, I'm perfectly happy to say, quite reasonable to suppose, that at this point they actually got it right. But my faith does not rest there. Uh, as a Christian, I do not every day think, if it wasn't for Jesus being born in Bethlehem, my whole faith ceases to exist. Uh, whereas, take away the resurrection of Jesus, and I would take off this collar and go and find something more suitable to do with my life.